G'day, how you going? My name's Dave Gill. I've just recently rebuilt my uh, water pump off my boat and I thought uh, I'd try and put together a bit of a video to show you what I did and hopefully that might help you if you're considering such a project. So let's have a look at what I did. I did this job in March 2014. The water pump had 1200 hours on it and I was mainly interested in the drive shaft and these components here. The drive shaft itself had a little bit of deformity here, a little bit of wear from probably a non-genuine impeller being installed over a number of years in the past. Uh, a little bit of free play but it doesn't seem to be enough to worry me and a new shaft is $300 so providing once I pull these other components off that the shaft is still in good order I'll uh, just refit it with new components. Interested in the oil seal, uh, the water seal and the oil seal and also just in a feel of the bearings to see how they've held up after 1200 hours. So here you can see I've removed the bearings. One of those bearings did have quite a grindy feel to it so I will be replacing those. Those bearings have a circlet that sits in between the two of them so you can't just push both bearings off in one direction. One needs to go off one way and the other one needs to go off the other way. That circlet is a little trap for young players that might not have known about it like myself. But the shaft itself is cleaned up quite nicely and uh, so now the uh, punt starts, it's time to rebuild it. You can see I've put the circlip on the shaft. The shaft's been sitting in the fridge for a period of time, about half an hour, to chill it down to try and contract it so that then the bearings would just slide on nice and easily. As you can see, the bearings slid on a part of the way, but nice and easily I would say not. And no matter how much my stubby little fingers tried to push those bearings on, it wasn't going to happen. So I utilised a little jig that I'd made up and um, I got a sash clamp and a little bit of plastic protection on the top there and I was able to press it in. So extremely ugly but effective. A uh, bit of elbow grease and I was able to push that down. You can see if you look real close that, that those bearings end up right in the right spot and uh, no damage done to the shaft happy days that's just about it there so once I pulled that out I was able to measure it and compare it to the original measurements that I'd taken which was uh, 14 mils down the shaft and that's exactly where they ended up so I was pretty happy with that I thought I'd better double check as my old man used to teach me measure twice cut once so I ran the in digital measure over it and achieved a good result as far as I'm concerned. Pretty happy with that. So then it was just a matter of manipulating the oil seal and the water seal into the housing of the pump. Uh, the bearings are lubricated by the engine oil and cooled to a degree by that engine oil so you need to prevent that going anywhere and then the uh, water, the raw water that's going through the pump pushed around by the impeller, you don't want that coming out and there's a little um, o-ring sits in between the two which I think is a bit of a telltale if, if one of the seals was to go you'd start to, it would come through and it would hit that o-ring and it would start dripping out and uh, you'd probably notice that first thing. Anyway, then just a matter of uh, pressing that shaft through. It's a snug fit, um, not impossible, but definitely took a, a bit of um, persuading, I suppose. But once again, I just pressed it through with a, a clamp and a jig, and it went in quite easily. Once Again, pretty fiddly sort of stuff in a, in a basic workshop. Uh, I'm sure there's better setups out there, but I may do with, with what I had. And it just goes to show that you don't really need a lot of tools to do this job. And I'm sure if you've watched this video, you'll be able to come up with some ways to streamline your methods to make sure that you've got plenty of room and uh, all the tools at hand to do the job even better than what I did. So here you can see I just put the G-clamp on the bottom of the jig, a little bit of protection on the top of that shaft and it pretty much goes straight in. It's just one or two little cracks and uh, and it's in and then I just push the second bearing in. The first one's the one that took a, a little bit of effort 
realistically here it goes it's just one two and then pop it goes in there we have the shaft in position within the housing of the pump that section there that you can see is the bit that links into the engine that drives the whole thing so now it's just a matter of fitting the circuit that holds that shaft and uh, the bearings in place I mean it's done 1200 hours it's had a basically a major refit and it'll probably be 12 or 1300 hours before it gets looked at again so you've got to make sure that you're comfortable that everything's in place so basically I'm reinserting that circuit I want to make sure nothing's going to move it's pretty much just a direct drive straight out of the engine so once again you saw how a little bit of slack on the other side of that shaft cause some deformity so I want to be comfortable that when that goes back on the engine nothing's going to move so I tend to fiddle around a fair bit I'm probably thinking the whole job through at this stage too just making sure that I'm comfortable with it, all the work I've done so that's where we're at then it's just a matter of fitting the uh, water pump impeller on the other side that days come on Gilly that'll do yeah, looks good. With the impeller, it's just a matter of wrapping a cable tie around it to uh, compress the veins. I lubricate everything, the inside of the housing and then the veins themselves. And then as you can see, you just pull that cable tie out as you push the uh, impeller in. And then the only thing left to do there is you need to um, ensure that the face where the gasket's going to go doesn't have any lubricant or anything on it because you need that to be uh, as flat as possible so I just give that a good serious going over make sure it's all clean and tidy and uh, that's it the concept of the lubricant is that when that impeller first fires up it's uh, it needs that for lubrication once the water gets through and into it then it's water lubricated from then on in but uh, I have been told that if you don't lubricate it, you can burn out the veins even if you just, just put a brand new impeller in. Righto, so I'm just putting the gasket on and the it's, um, it's going on okay. It um, looks like it was made for a round there is a second pump like this that's got the round face it doesn't really matter because this will still do the job and as you can see I've spun the face plate around so that now the flattest surface I've got is on the inside which is where it belongs I'll just screw this down and um, that'll be us done ready to put it back on the boat ready for me to go and have a glass of wine I think Oops. oh just gotta get this one come on yep that's good him. so I just like to lightly just hold it there it's basically because the impeller can be pushing the plate out a little so we just work our way around do those two little ones and then get these these are pretty long but um, that's all right what I'll probably do is just put a dollop of Loctite on the back side of them so that they can't really uh, pull through or undo by mistake um, because there'll be a blob of Loctite on the other side there. Could have Loctited them in but that just would have added more problems if you get it on the gasket and dramas like that so this will do. As I said before um, they're long screws, longer than required, but they were just the right size and um, I got them all for $2.50. That's all the guy had. I couldn't be bothered trimming them down, they don't need it. Worst case scenario, I could whack a nut on the other side, but they don't need that either. So Happy days, we'll just get these last few done. Should be ready to put back on the boat. So there you have, uh, basically, your dissection or... Uh, We've ripped it apart 
and I've put it back together. I've replaced the bearings, I've replaced the oil seal and the water seal and the o-ring. Um, new impeller, new gasket, new screws. She's be, she should be good for another 1200 miles, or well, 1200 hours, sorry. Uh, however, I'll put a new gasket in each, ah, sorry, a new um, impeller in each year, as I have been doing, and uh, gasket. But at least I know the bearings are sound, and she should be good to go now. I feel quite confident about this, quite happy with it. Okay, just a bit like putting a car tire on, just work your way around. Next video I do, I'll try and set things up a bit better. It's first first video I've ever done, so I might just get a decent screwdriver. Oop, don't want to break that. Okay. I'll give them a little tight nip up tomorrow, just in case they've uh, loosened. I'll probably get a better bloody screwdriver too. This one's a little too big and the other one's a little too small. Okay, happy days, we're done. And the other thing, so I've got to get that to face that way. That's all right. A little bit of excess gasket. I don't know what to do with that at this stage, but I'll probably just leave it. I'm sure it'll uh, fall off eventually. I might cut it off. But she's back in business. Okay, so as you can see, she's all rebuilt, brand new, ready to go. Ready to do another 1200 hours, and by that time, we'll be at 2400 hours. The engine will be in need of a, um, a major overhaul at 2500 hours, so I'm quite happy with that. Confident that this will now see me through, providing I do the normal maintenance of impeller changes and things like that once a year. Uh, I hope this has helped you guys if you're looking at, um, at doing a similar sort of project. And um, we'll see you out on the water, eh? Take care.